What's the worst case if Trump loses this year? Maybe Americans have to learn to speak Chinese. You believe? On Monday, Hong Kong's billionaire and media tycoon Jimmy Lai and other nine people were arrested under the national security law for suspicion of colluding with foreign forces to destabilize Hong Kong. Lai is the founder of tabloid-style newspaper Apple Daily and was constantly persuading the youth to take the street during Hong Kong's unrest. Well, we're not saying that he can't write what he wants in his paper, but I mean, press freedom doesn't mean that mainstream media can post ISIS recruitment on its headline. This was the highest profile detention under the new law since it took effect in late June. People are saying it's a good day and they are all really excited because they've been waiting for this for so long, but then two days later, Lai was released on bail for 5 million Hong Kong dollars. Of course, people are extremely disappointed with how quickly he was released. But what more can you expect was the justice system shadowed by the British Empire and a capitalist social order that worships money? Of course, this was going to happen. Like it did many times before. But this time, people are expecting a different end to the story with the national security law. Let us wait for his trial and see if justice is served or not. Another news concerning Hong Kong is that the US imposed sanctions on 11 Hong Kong officials, and amongst them, the region's chief executive Carrie Lam, the commissioner and former commissioner of Hong Kong Police Force, and the secretary for security of the region. Their assets are blocked by the US, but none of them were intimidated. Luo Huining, the director of Hong Kong Liaison Office, said he has no assets in the US. Maybe he could send Trump $100, why not, so they can impose sanctions on him? Carrie Lam said she thinks it's time to cancel her US visa. I wonder how Trump still have time to mess around with someone else's business while coronavirus is super spreading at your home with 5.2 million cases reported already. I guess maybe the so-called freedom and democracy of Hong Kong is worth more than the 10,000 lives of American citizens, who knows? Now, US also went ahead to publish the personal information of those 11 officials they sanctioned. And Carrie Lam pointed out that the US government got her address from, adding that it is not Victoria House, but the government house. She suspected that this error occurred because it was an address that she used to apply for a US visa in 2016. And the US took that information out of the immigration office and handed it over to the Treasury. If you ever set foot on American soil, the administration collects your information and they can use that in whatever way that benefits them. And ironically, the same administration called for a ban on TikTok because of security reasons. And they warned everyone about how China can track the locations of federal employees and use their personal information for blackmail. How could you think of something like this if you haven't done so already? Hypocrites. And amusingly, this week, the CIA concluded that there is no evidence that Chinese intelligence services have ever accessed the data from TikTok. Well, despite the report, Trump still moved forward with an executive order saying that he will prohibit US companies doing business with ByteDance and WeChat. Coincidentally, it just happened to be that his approval rate is increasing. Ha, huh, it was never about protecting the people, it's always about how to stay in the office. Apparently, he cares about this more than anything else. Otherwise, he wouldn't warn the Americans of a possible Chinese takeover in the coming years. You will have to learn to speak Chinese huh, if he loses the election. Keep calm and go vote then. Back to our home with some good news. It seems that the southern part of China is finally coming out of Xunqi, the flood season this week. The water level of Dongqing Hu Lake, located in China's Hunan province, has finally dropped below its warning level. You see, every year we apparently seem to be experiencing the worst flood, starting from May and then in August, and then everything gets back to normal. It's just how climate is on this part of the planet and how nature works. 
And we do have those written histories about the flood and how we fought them back. Every Chinese knows the story of Da Yu Zhi Shui, Yu the Great Taming the Water. He was a legendary emperor in ancient China around 2200 BC. At the time, his people were suffering from the torrential floods of Huanghe, the Yellow River, and he figured out a way of digging channels to conduct the water into the sea. What made him so famous was his dedication to fighting the floods. Right? That's right. He never set foot in his house for certain years, even though he went past home three times. And nowadays, China continues its fight with the flood. Many were saved by the efforts of tens of thousands of soldiers, firefighters, and police officers on the front line. And of course, there are dams built by the government. And the most famous of all, Sanxia Daba, the Three Gorges Dam. It was designed to tame the longest river in China, Changjiang, the Yangtze River. And According to the Western and Taiwanese media, it collapses every flood season, and that leads to catastrophic consequences. And yet, it lives mm -hmm. to fight another year. So, what is with all these accusations? I don't know. Another good news this week is that nearly 400 A-level scenic spots in Hubei province will reopen to visitors for free. Mm -hmm. And discounts are also offered by more than a thousand travel agencies and 350 hotels. Mm -hmm. The province said they wanted to express their gratitude to the rest of the nation for their assistance during the outbreak. And what better way to do it than invite them over for a free visit? Every Chinese remember this scene when the assistant medic and nurses completed their job and left the province. The patient cried and hugged them, promising that they would invite everyone who helped back to Hubei when it's all over. So that's what they're doing now. And don't forget the social distancing. So every tourist site could only be 50% full. And of course, temperatures need to be taken at the gate. And after the reopening announcement, searches for hotels in Hubei doubled and that for tickets tripled. With the support and enthusiasm from the whole nation, we have reason to believe that Hubei's economy will recover very soon. And that's the end of this week's Red on China. See you next week. See ya.